All right, before we start the video, I just want to tell you guys to, if you like what you see with Midnight Ghost Hunt, go buy the game, support the developers, they're really cool. They even gave me a quick beta key, I just asked for one, I was a little late to the beta, but they were just like, here you go, have a free beta key, and I'm like, cool, thank you. So, really cool guys, especially Ski Dog, thank you man. All right, well, let's go. Hello and welcome to RPG Labs, my name is Dutchie, and well, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so today we will be talking about Midnight Ghost Hunters. Now, if you like Ghostbusters, you'll like this game. If you like Prop Hunts, you'll like this game even more. And, well, if you like a little bit of Rainbow Six Siege as well, I think you'll like it. Now, the reason I say Rainbow Six Siege, by the way, is because of some of the gadgets in the game. It just, I don't know, it just gives that little bit of Rainbow vibe. Now, I will be covering most of the weapons, the perks, and everything in the game. So you guys can decide what you like best. I'll basically be going over some perks and cons of the weapons. Alright, let's start off with the Spectral Cannon. Now, the Spectral Cannon is actually the first weapon you will unlock. It will just be absolutely free and it's right there for you to start using. Now, as a starter weapon, this weapon is pretty damn powerful and I do recommend you going with it if you're not too sure with what sort of weapon you want to go for to start, just to get a hang of the game. Now this gun takes around about 4 shots to take out a regular ghost if they're not possessing a prop. Now if they are possessing a prop, depending on which prop, it will take a few more shots or even a few less shots. Now another cool thing about this weapon is you only need one shot to figure out if the prop is possessed. Unlike some of the other weapons on this list. Alright, let's move on to the shotgun. The salt shotgun to be exact. Now the salt shotgun is pretty damn powerful, it only takes 2 shots for a kill. But you do need to be pretty damn close up. Now the cool thing about this shotgun is, is that if you hit a ghost, it will launch them far away. Now this sounds kind of bad for when it comes against the blue ghost who are trying to hide from you. Because, well, you just shot them away and they can most likely get away now. But it actually is pretty powerful against the red ghost when midnight strikes. Because you can actually knock them away and they can't, well, get to you. And also, if you're shooting a prop, you'll know immediately if there's something inside of it. Alright, let's move over to the two melee weapons that the game has at the moment, which is the Ghost Smasher, which does exactly what its name says. Two little hits on the ghost and you can kill it. Pretty damn simple. The only problem with this is, is that it's extremely weak against ghosts who are hiding in props. But that's where the sledgehammer comes in. Now the sledgehammer is the exact opposite. It's pretty damn weak against ghosts normally, but it's damn strong against, well, props. Well, I say damn strong, but in my opinion, I reckon it does need a little bit of a buff. So maybe wait until it gets that buff to actually start using the sledgehammer. But in saying that, it can one-shot most of the smaller objects, so that's always good. Now let's move on to Project X. Now Project X is a minigun basically. It fires out a whole bunch of plasma bolts and if you guys have ever played Fallout this is basically the plasma gun. It's pretty pretty damn fun. Uh, it doesn't fire as fast as the Fallout version obviously but it is pretty good. Um, the overheat mechanic it in my opinion it overheats a little bit too fast but that's also probably because i mean if you could just spam this gun it would be absolutely ridiculous but one of the perks can actually help with that funny enough but i'll talk about those pretty soon now one thing you definitely do not want to do with this weapon is let it overheat at all because once it's overheated you are well you're so vulnerable look at how long this takes the ghost can just hit you even in their blue form they can easily take you down now that is obviously unless you get some friends around you because, well, most ghosts aren't stupid enough to try and rush four people. Alright, now we are moving on to the Frostbite. Now the Frostbite, in my opinion, is probably one of my favorite weapons at the moment. It's basically the SMG of the game and, well, SMG in most games are pretty damn powerful. But in this one, it's not really powerful with damage, as you can see. It's more powerful with trying to freeze your opponents. Now, as you can see in this clip, I started shooting this guy and, well, he hardly could move. Um, this is basically with any sort of prop. So if they're a large prop, they will basically not be able to move unless they quickly switch. And a lot of people at the moment don't seem to want to switch props that easily. Which, you know, the game's new, so makes sense. At the moment, this is definitely a gun that I recommend. There is one small downside of this weapon. Um, you need to actually shoot the target a few times before it actually will prompt that it's a possessed item. 
All right, now let's move on to the Reaper. Now the Reaper is basically the sniper of the game. One thing I do have to quickly mention about it, that the sensitivity is quite off when you first start playing it. So go into the settings and just change it to your liking. Because in my opinion, it was way too high for a sniper. But anyway, um, this is a two shot weapon basically. So what it does, it attaches a dart to the ghost or the prop that you're fighting and it will do damage over time and then blow up at the end. Now, this is pretty damn decent against most props, and it's also damn decent against most ghosts. Only taking two shots for most ghosts, and well, for props, depending on the prop, it will take two to three hits. Oh, if it's a small prop though, it'll only take one. So yeah, pretty good gun overall. Definitely recommend going for it, especially if you're one of those Call of Duty hardcore, you know, quick scopes only sort of person. Now we come to the Harpoon Bazooka. Now I recommend one person in the team carrying this gun just because it is so good in trapping ghosts. Now once you've spotted the ghost you only need to harpoon it once and it will basically be stuck to you. It can hit you while you're actually uh, pulling the chain but at the same time if all your friends around you are shooting the ghosts that should not be a problem. Now this is especially good for if they're actually trapped in a prop because if they are trapped in a certain prop, like for example this chair right here, they will not be able to fight back. Meaning you basically can get a free kill, especially if your friends are around you. Alright, now we get to the riot shield. Now the riot shield's pretty self-explanatory, it's a riot shield. You can basically block all incoming demons from in front of you and you can do a little bit of damage to them while they're in front of you. Uh, the damage that you can do to them, as you can see, it, it's not, you know, crazy amounts, but it's more for defense than it is for attack. Now, I recommend pulling this out at midnight so you actually have something to defend yourself with. Because sometimes, especially if it's a 4v1, it's almost impossible to win. Alright, now we get to the flamethrower. Now, this one is really good in hunting out props, because you can sort of just spray it everywhere and, well, it will start damaging props. Now, just like the frostbite, you do actually need to keep this on them for a little while, but it doesn't take too long for the props to actually activate with the fire. Now, if they're in their ghost form, you technically only need to hit them twice with a little burst of flames to kill them. So, you know, it's actually pretty damn good. This is especially handy for if the ghosts are trying to run away and you only need to get a little bit of damage on them. You just basically run after them with the flamethrower and do half their health with the damage you do with the flame. Alright, well that takes care of all the weapons in the game. Now let's move on to some of the gadgets that you can get. Now let's start off with the radar. Now the radar is pretty self-explanatory. If the dial is all the way to the left where the blue zone is, that means that there are no ghosts in the area. If the dial is all the way to the right, that means that there's a ghost in the area that is most likely hiding in one of the props. The vacuum is pretty simple. So after you defeat a ghost, they will leave these ectoplasms lying around. Now if you vacuum those up, you will make sure that the other ghosts cannot revive them. Now another thing this does, at the end of the night, if one of the ghosts did survive, um, you will end up going into the red state and fighting all four of them. Well, if you vacuum them up, they're actually a little bit less powerful, so you have a bit more of a fighting chance. Now let's move on to the defibrillators. Now the defibrillators are pretty self-explanatory. You can actually revive your teammates with it. So if one of your team goes down, don't worry. As long as you get a defibrillator on you, you'll be able to quickly pop that and get them back into the game. One thing though, ghosts can consume the souls of the people who are down, and if they do that, you will not be able to revive them with the defibrillator. So it's always handy to make sure that somebody is staying at the body. Alright, now the medkit. The medkit is, well, it's a medkit, you have free charges with it, and you can, well, heal your friends with it, and yourself. Alright, now let's move on to the spectrophone. Now the spectrophone picks up ghost sounds. Now if there's no ghost sounds in the area, there will be nothing at the, that little bottom left thing. But the higher that goes, the more likely there's a ghost in that area. Now personally, I actually like the radar better, but this one isn't the best second choice. Now we got the Pathfinder, which puts out a little screen in front of you, allowing you to detect ectoplasm. Now as you can see, there's a lot of ectoplasm right here, because they've been walking back and forth quite a bit. 
Now this little gadget is really handy for trying to follow the footsteps of ghosts. Now the only downside about this thing is, is exactly is that it doesn't exactly tell you where it is. Like over here I thought it was this object but it wasn't. So in my opinion the radar is probably still better. Now let's move on to the trap. Now the trap is basically a mine that you place down and if ghosts step over it or near it, it will attach a beam to them, slowing them down, but also preventing them from using some of their abilities. Now I think that this will be a really good one for endgame because it will slow the ghosts down while they're trying to quickly attack you, meaning that they're slowed down and you can get a couple of shots on them. And now we move on to the grenade. Now the grenade is, well, just really a grenade, it's exactly what it does. Um, it's really good for clearing out small little rooms if you think there might be someone in there. Oh, and technically it's a sticky nade, so if you're able to attach this to a ghost, well, you know, it's basically bye-bye for them. But it still seems to bounce off walls and everything like that, so hey, best of both worlds I guess. Alright, so now let's move on to the grappling hook. The grappling hook can get you to places really fast, just like a grappling hook should. Now, the cool thing about this grappling hook as well is, is that you can actually get to places that are usually off limits. Like, way up here, I went up there and I discovered a whole bunch of ducks. Which, hey, kinda cool. Little easter egg. And last, but certainly not least for the gadgets, is the C4. Now the C4 basically acts just like the grenade, doing a whole bunch of damage in the area. Uh, you can basically one-shot most of the ghosts with this, so, you know, go ham. You can also, by the way, one-shot all of the props. Um, well, you can one-shot them, but they will just be out of it, and then you'll have to hit them again. Unless you can somehow get two C4s on them, then you can just blow them up instantly and kill them instantly. Alright, now that we've done all the gadgets, let's move on to perks. Now, perks are basically passive abilities that your character will have throughout the game. So, let's start off with Lightweight. Now, on the left you can see the Lightweight perk, and on the right you can see the one without it. Also, I know I probably should have done a straight line test, but I kind of just mucked that up and uh, didn't really think about it at the time. So, uh, hopefully this will still help for you guys. I also can't get any more footage at the moment because the beta is over and also the game is not out until tomorrow. Alright, now we go to the healing aura. Now this healing aura puts a little green circle around you. When allies tap in it, they slightly start healing over time and you will always just be healing over time anyway. I recommend this for any new players just so they can sort of get the hang of the game and also you'll be healed over time, which is always a good perk. Alright, now let's move on to cold-blooded. Now, the ghosts can see through walls, and especially at midnight. Now, once you're actually trying to run away from them at midnight, the cold-blooded can really help because it will minimize the area that the ghost can see you from. So the ghost will literally need to be like 5 meters away from you for you to be able to show up for them through walls. So definitely recommend that one for the end of the night if you are by yourself and you just have to get away. Uh, now we move on to Juggernaut. Now Juggernaut's pretty self-explanatory. You get turned into a Juggernaut. The only downfall is you cannot sprint. So in my opinion, it's not really worth because sprinting is really good. Alright, now we move on to Quick Reload. Now Quick Reload does exactly what it says it does. It's a Quick Reload. Now this is really good for whenever you're trying to really catch a ghost, but you know, you kind of hate the reloading aspect. So this will minimize the downtime for any battle. Now if you just want a little bit more firepower in general, you can always go with Extended Mag. Now this even weirdly enough works on the double barrel shotgun, which has two barrels, but for some reason it will have three bullets in it now. Now this basically does exactly what it does, it just extends the mag a little bit, but it also kind of works on the flamethrower, allowing you just to use the flamethrower for a while longer. Alright, and now we got extra gear. Extra gear basically allows you to carry around a extra C4 or an extra grenade or whatever it is that you want to carry around extra. Now this also works with the mines, which is pretty damn good. Now the only downside with this is that you can technically just resupply to resupply station whenever you want. Now the next perk is Overkill. Overkill allows you to carry two weapons, but you will give up your gadgets. So it is pretty good if, for example, you're really fighting for your life and you can actually swap out between a shield and a gun. 
that's one of the combos that I was thinking of anyway. But at the same time, you probably also really want to get some of your gadgets in there because, well, the gadgets are damn powerful. Alright, now we move on to gadgets here, which is basically overkill, but then with gadgets. Now, I don't really know why you want to be carrying around two gadgets. I mean, maybe if you're carrying around a radar and some C4, that might be handy. But in my opinion, I don't, I don't think this will be too used, really. Alright, so that's basically everything the hunters have. Now, I'm going to be making a ghost version very soon. So hopefully you guys can see that and like all the ghost things. Now, as you can see over here, the ghost can be pretty powerful, even in their blue state. But anyway, leave a like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff if you want to stay up to date with this game, because I will want to be covering it quite a bit. I am loving it so far. I've always been a big fan of prop hunt games, and well, this one is scratching that itch quite nicely. But anyway, you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!